Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So today is Monday, October 29th, and I am covering the polls from Thursday, October 25th, considering that I'm pretty behind in covering the daily polls. So today I'm actually going to be combining Thursday and Friday, and then making another video covering Saturday and Sunday. That way I'm able to cover everything very quickly, very efficiently, that way everything can get out of the way. So first of all, uh, something pretty striking is that there's a number of polls now, but that is pretty much expected considering how late we are into the election season. So can't really say that that's something uh, drastically different than what we've been seeing. Just the areas where the polls are taken definitely do show a little bit as to where the attention from the nation is going to. So if you look at the House races, we are seeing some very contested areas. Every single one of these districts that are polled in the House races are areas where the Democrats think they have possibilities of making a pickup. Uh, for the governor's races, California, not too much attention, uh, but Michigan, definitely. Georgia, Florida, California, Michigan, and Florida Senate races, definitely something to see there regardless of uh, the election, especially in states like Florida and Michigan, and then we look at the Florida and Georgia governor races, but then if we look at the California Senate race, that one is pretty much just an establishment Democrat versus a sort of outsider type candidate, uh, but overall. We know how most of these results actually end at the end of the day. So we start off with our Florida Senate poll, which is from uh, WCTV-TV. It shows Nelson ahead by 1%. So the lead definitely has narrowed down, but that's for the singular poll itself. So if we actually go over to Friday, uh, which I'm not going to do right now, I think there may be a poll there, or it may be Saturday or Sunday. But we'll get a little bit more information about the Florida Senate race itself. Right now, Nelson leading by 1% is not necessarily the worst thing, considering that he was behind multiple months uh, and now is just starting to take back uh, the lead. In the Senate race there. In the Michigan Senate race, the lead has dropped drastically. Debbie Stabenow used to lead by double digits, plus 18, plus 22. In fact, this was a safe state according to my most recent prediction. If you're looking at all of the numbers here, double digits leading into now. And the most recent poll actually that I'm going to be covering in a separate video actually shows her ahead by 17%, uh, but it's still a lean Democratic seat. It has moved from likely Democratic. As you can see here, the entire lead before was double digits. Okay, uh, Debbie Stabenow plus 16.3% on October 24th. In the past couple days, it has gone down to a 7.3% lead and up to a 9.7% lead as of today. So I'm not saying that's the worst thing for a Democrat and a Republican state from 2016. This is a Republican state back in 2016, so you can't really expect much of the Democrats, but the Democratic Party is doing phenomenal here. The fact that the polling numbers have gone down to double digits, not double digits, sorry, down to single digits, definitely says something about the race itself, but a new poll is actually showing conflicting data. So we're going to see probably a Debbie Stabenow win, just probably not in the safe margin, leaning into the likely margin. California Senate race. Diane Feinstein leads by plus 16%. That's pretty much very consistent in all the polls we've been seeing. 20% for DeLeon De and then Kevin DeLeon and then Diane Feinstein always in the 40s. 44, 40, 43, 41, and then uh, DeLeon 31, 26, 27, 23. So overall, Feinstein leads two Democrats on the ballot. No possibility of a GOP pickup there. Going over to the Florida governor race, though, right now, Ross DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, sorry, leads by 3%. Now, this is where the poll gets a little tricky. Uh, we're looking at a poll that shows the Republican candidate for the governor's race lead by 3%. But the Florida Senate race poll shows the Democrat leading by 1%. Typically, it's a flip. This is the first poll in a while that has showed DeSantis leading, and it actually moved it from lead Democratic to toss-up in the RCP governor map. So before, it was plus 1, and then it uh, shot right back up to 5.8%, and then it has narrowed down to 3.2%. Keep in mind, this is a Democratic uh, pickup, if this was to hold true on Election Day. Right now, there's an incumbent for the uh, Republican Party, that is Rick Scott, who is running for the Senate race at this point, so... And Ron DeSantis is one of them. So we're looking at the Florida governor polls. First one, an outlier, really doesn't say much about the race itself. We're looking at the Georgia governor race, though. This one has always been within 2%. I don't think there's a single, single poll, except for once before that showed Kemp leading by 3%, that has been uh, outside of that 2% margin. Actually, it was Abrams plus 3%, so a little bit more on the Democratic side. But then Kemp plus 2, Abrams plus 2, Ty Kemp plus 2, Kemp plus 2, Kemp plus 2. Ty and then Kemp plus two. This race has always been within a 2% margin, and that is phenomenal for Democrats in the state of Georgia. Typically, they cap off at 46, 47%. Stacey Abrams is around that margin, but the fact that this incumbent is not, uh, sorry, not this incumbent, this GOP candidate is not doing too well, definitely says that the Democratic Party is at a much better standing point in terms of statewide elections, possibly presidential elections, and in some individual House races in 2018. That one covered out of the way. Uh, same results we've been seeing from that Georgia governor race. But we can go ahead and take a look at some other polls. If we're looking at the Michigan governor race, Whitmer is now leading by 5%. Again, typically, Debbie Stabenow uh, 
hugely outperforms the governor's race. But Whitmer leads by plus 5% over Bill Schuette. Overall is 8.2%. So, again, not the worst numbers uh, for the Democrats there at all, considering there's a Republican incumbent. Looking at the California governor race, Gavin Newsom is going to win this one, plus 11%. But now we can move over to the House races. Uh, California 39 district, the Democrat leads by one. Florida 26, Democrat leads by one. Virginia 10th, Barbara Comstock is going to lose this race. I live around the district. I know she's going to lose this race. Um, but taking all the way, all personal, uh, not really biased, just personal knowledge about the, the race itself, just looking at the data that if I lived in California, how I'd analyze this race. Wexton leads by plus 13%. Consistent trend that the Democrat is going to win here. Was contested back in 2016, and if you look at the numbers, Clinton plus 10, Romney plus 1.1. An 11.1% swing in favor of the Democratic Party. And then we go over to the New Jersey 2nd District, Van Drew plus 17. 3rd District, Kim plus 2, which is actually a little bit uh, different from what we've been seeing before. MacArthur currently leads by 0.3%. Uh, this is a tr Obama-Trump district in terms of a flip. President Trump job approval rating, USA Today disapproved plus 11. That's one of those tracking polls. Uh, President Trump job approval rating disapproved plus 6. 2018 generic congressional vote, uh, Reuters, Democrats plus 7. USA Today, Democrats plus 8. Let's actually see the number right now. Uh, it's overall 7.6%, very consistent with what we've been seeing. The Democrats have never reached a point where they were at 50% at any point in time, so we're actually maybe seeing it uh, at the end of the day. And then we see congressional job approval rating disapproved plus 47. Expected, wrong track plus 9, wrong track plus 19 for the direction of the country. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Friday, October 26 polls from Texas Senate, Texas Governor, and then House election polls, one President Trump job approval poll, and then one 2018 generic congressional vote poll. So Texas Senate race, Ted Cruz leads by 6%. Uh, that number probably is going to do very solid with his campaign. I understand that this race is going to be a lot more contested than before, and I do see a lot of your guys' arguments as to why Better work could win this race. But keep in mind, Texas is still Texas. It's going to take a lot for this race to flip. Better work is a very good candidate. I've seen the Obama type style of uh, – I guess, campaigning that Better Work has taken, and this campaign definitely seems like it has a real shot at winning the Senate race, unlike many Democrats before Better O'Rourke. Unfortunately for them, Ted Cruz's popularity is not too bad. If we're looking at his poll, it's around 49%. Okay, His disapproval rating's in the 30s, so it's not like more Texans disapprove, just not as many have a clear opinion about him as in other states in terms of contested Senate races. Right now, Ted Cruz is at the point where he's over that 50% mark, which means that even if Better Work gets the remaining 4% of undecided voters, Ted Cruz still wins by two. And looking at the Texas governor race, it could be that Greg Abbott is pushing him over the top, but Ted Cruz is probably that only race that people actually care about in the state of Texas. Maybe one or two House districts, but that's one out of 36. Where if we're looking at the Senate race, that affects the state as a whole, and so does the governor's race. But the governor's race is pretty much expected to go to the GOP. I mean, Abbott plus 19. The Senate race is not. The GOP seems very riled up after the whole Kavanaugh hearing, and Ted Cruz wasn't a direct part of that. He was already expected to vote in favor of Brett Kavanaugh, so that's not like that was something that was too contested in terms of the state of Texas itself. Better work is just that really good Democratic candidate. I mean, two years ago, Texas Senate races would not be this close. Okay, so definitely the Democrats have made improvements, but unfortunately for them, this just may not be their time. Completely getting away from the state of Texas, California 10th District race. The Democrat leads by 2%. All these polls taken were from the New York Times. The New York Times shows you exactly where they're getting their data from, exactly where the people vote in favor of either political party or from. It shows you how many calls they make, how many people answer, how many people vote for each political party candidate. And they're real time, so you're seeing it as it happens. It's not like they're botching or publishing this data late. You're seeing exactly how it happens, and you're seeing the exact same results as if you would, as if you were in the New York Times taking the poll itself. So right now, California 10th District, Democrats plus 2. California 49th District, this is Daryl Issa's seat. Uh, the Democrat leads by 14%. That is huge for uh, the Democratic Party. I believe this actually may be in their candidate uh I guess column Romney led here by 6.5 percent and the Clinton won here by 7.5 percent so one of those flipping districts uh, looking over the Illinois 13 district this is a contested race lean GOP uh, Trump improved here right now Davis leads by 5 percent the Republican incumbent MacArthur leads Kim by 1 percent so this is where the area where I said there is a little bit of conflicting data uh, Kim leads by 10 and 1 and then MacArthur plus 2 Kim plus 2 MacArthur plus 1 so we're going to actually see at the end of the day where a lot of the data is coming from, and that's going to be a very, very contested race. Ohio's first district, one of the most gerrymandered districts. Uh, right now, the Democrat is behind by 9% and also behind by 9% before, so not much has changed here. Romney 6.1, Trump 6.6, .6, so not much has changed. Lean GOP seat. In terms of the Texas 7th district race, the Democratic candidate is behind by 1%. The Republican incumbent is leading by 1%. Down from 3% before. Uh, Clinton won here by 1.4%. So this is actually a huge, huge change. Romney won here by 21.3%. Clinton won here by 1.4%. So 
So definitely an area where the Democrats think they could target right now. It's a toss-up. We're going to see at the end of the day in around eight days at the end of the 2018 midterm elections. The President Trump job approval rating disapproved plus 12 from NPR and Democrats plus 10, whereas they were plus 2 before in the most recent NPR poll taken. Now they are plus 10. That wraps up today's video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.